Okay, so let's imagine that uh, Skippy is standing on top of a very tall cliff. And uh, up here on top of the cliff, he is uh, throwing a ball. And it's going up in the air. And then down here on the ground is Skippette. And she is going to catch that ball. Uh, and she just wants to know where she has to stand along the ground to pick it to, to catch it. She also wants to know how long it's going to take to get there. And she wants to know the final velocity. So we're going to look for final velocity of the ball. We're going to look for the uh, time it takes for the ball to get there. And we're going to look for the what we're going to call the range, which is the displacement in the X direction. So the data we have uh, goes something like this. Uh, we know that Skippy is throwing the ball at, and I'm making these up as we go, uh, Skippy is throwing the ball at 15 meters a second at 20 degrees. So V initial X is going to equal 15 cosine 20. V initial Y is going to equal 15 sine 20. AX is going to equal 0. AY is going to equal negative 9.8 meters per second squared. We need to know how high Skippy is. Let's assume that Skippy is um, 20 meters up in the air. And so the displacement of the ball in the end, and that's 20 meters from his hand to uh, Skippet's hand. And it's a little, not drawn, but it's, it's a difference of the ball. It's going to go 20 meters down. So Y is going to equal negative 20. Let's find the x value. We know we're going to find that. Let's find the final velocity in the x, the final velocity in the y, and also the time. So to solve this out, what we want to do is we want to look and see that on the right-hand side, we have three pieces of data. 15 sine 20 is equal to... 5.1, so 5.1 meters per second, and 15 cosine 20 is going to equal 14.1. And so knowing this information, we can solve for the time. In this particular problem, because y, equal, y is not equal to 0, we're going to have to use some kinematic data. And so... Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, erase, we, we get the idea of the picture, I'm going to erase the picture here so that way we can uh, have some space and we will start to solve. So using y equals v initial t plus one half a t squared, we end up in the need of using the quadratic formula because we have negative 20 is equal to 5.1t uh, minus half of 9.8, which is 4.9. So it's one half of negative 9.8. That would be, again, 4.9 negative. So that's where the negative 4.9 comes from. And uh, times t squared. So looking at that, I immediately go, oh, geez, I have to use the quadratic. Not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, when you are solving this problem, remember if we solve the quadratic, we end up with the value of the value of final velocity and time. So I would set this up and say something like 4.9 t squared uh, minus 5.1 t minus 20 is equal to zero. So a is equal to 4.9 b is equal to negative 5.1, c is equal to negative 20. So in our equation, t equals negative b squared minus 4 minus the square root of 4ac. said that wrong. b is equal... b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, we start plugging in our numbers. And the numbers we have here is, would be t is equal to negative 5.1 plus or minus the square root of 
b squared, which is 5.1 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 4.9 um, times c, which is negative 20, all over 2a, which is 2 times 4.9. And so you plug that into your calculator, and you end up with negative 5.1 plus or minus, let's plug that in, 5.1 squared minus 4.9 times negative 4 times uh, negative 20, and you take the square root of that, and you end up with I had a negative sign error. I can't have a, have that, so I must have I didn't put negative twenty in. So minus you gotta be careful. Minus four times four point nine times negative twenty, and so I end up with uh, nineteen point nine. So if I negative five point one plus or minus nineteen point nine, all over. Um, 2 times 4.9 all over 9.8. So we can only have a positive time. So uh, negative 5.1 minus 19.9, that has to be thrown out. We can't necessarily have that time. So it would be 19.9 plus 5.1, which is 25.02 divided by 9.8. So the ball is in the air for 2.6 seconds. Now you might say, well, why do you go through all that work? Because you really could have just used the third kinematic and then the first kinematic. Well, that's what we did because there's your final velocity. The final velocity in this case uh, is going to be uh, uh, negative. Now I know we said we with, when figuring out time, it can't be negative. So there's two options for solving for time, plus or minus. But there's but in when it comes down, it's plus or minus as well. And so the negative, the velocity is to be negative 9.9 .9, uh, meters per second. The acceleration is zero. So on the other side, the final velocity in the x is 14.1. So we've immediately solved for a bunch of information. To solve for x, we now take the time we solve for and the time we solve for on the right, and we use it on the left using the equation x is equal to v initial t plus 1 half at squared, the second kinematic. Acceleration zero. That term's gone. X is equal to 14.1 times 2.6. And we end up with X equaling 36 meters. So the ball is in the air for 36 meters. It takes 2.6 seconds to go from Skippy's hand to Skippet's hand. The final velocity is negative 19.9, 14.1. If you want to know the, the combined velocity, you can use the Pythagorean theorem. And so what we could do here is if we want to find that final velocity, we could take the square root of 14.1 uh, squared plus 19.9 squared, and we can get the, get the value. And that value ends up being about 24.4 meters per second. We can also figure out the angle that it strikes at. So the longer the ball falls, so as the ball falls, if it, if it hits at this point, it only has a, has a very shallow angle. If it hits at this point down here, the angle is much steeper. And so the longer it falls, the greater that angle, because the final velocity in the y direction is increasing more and more and more and more and more negative. And so to figure it out, we would do the arc tangent of y over x, the arc tangent of negative 19.9 over the arc tangent of 14.1, uh, and you would get your answer. You would get your angle if we want to do that. If you have any questions, let me know.